Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Well, I'm feeling pretty excited today because it's time to plant our broccoli. You know, I started them about five weeks ago indoors. They're looking great, and so it's time to plant them out into the garden. The other thing I'm going to talk about today is pest control for all the different kinds of bugs that bother cabbage family crops. The first thing I thought I'd do is take you on a quick tour of our little greenhouse so you can see the types of things I started indoors. And of course, first up is the broccoli, and it is looking great. There's also some eggplant in there, celery, and then the two things in the milk jug bottoms are winter sown flowers that I'm waiting to plant. Zinnias, artichokes, Bill's amazing pepper plants. He knows what he's doing. And then switch over to the other side real quickly. Here are the tomato plants. More tomato plants. We got a little carried away this year. And then lots of annual flowers that I should be able to plant outdoors in a little over a week, provided Mother Nature cooperates. The next thing I wanted to do is to show you a list of cabbage family crops. And so these are all in the plant family Brassicaceae. And the reason I wanted to show you that is because the tips I'm going to give you today for pest control will apply to all of them. This is the bed I'm going to be planting the broccoli in today. And I'm also going to be planting some turnips. They're in the same plant family and susceptible to the same types of pests. So I figure why not plant them together and protect them together. The raised bed is four feet wide by eight feet long. And you can just ignore those white pipes on the outsides of the beds. Those are 10 inch long PVC pipes that are screwed to the sides of the beds and we use them for a smaller lightweight type of a hoop that we put either row cover or other types of things over. But for this bed and for the broccoli, since it grows pretty tall, I'm going to use a taller type of hoop that I will push down into the soil on the inside of the bed. So you'll see that later in the video. This bed is watered with a drip irrigation setup, and in this instance, it is quarter inch drip tubing. I've got 12 plants, and the variety is early dividend. We have grown this variety for a few years, and it really is a great performer. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of the lowest leaves. And it's not because I plant them like tomato plants where you do that and plant them deeply. It's actually for insect control and I'm going to show you why I'm doing this once the plants are in. And once I've done this I'm going to carry these over to the bed and figure out where I want to plant them. I decided to lay them out into two rows of six plants each, and they're roughly a foot, maybe a little bit more apart. So I'm going to dig a hole that's about the size of the pot. Let's see. Yeah, that's about right. And then I'm going to hold my hand like so and pat the bottom to get it out. You never want to pull a plant out by its stem because that can crush the cells and make it really difficult for the plant to move moisture and nutrients. The other thing I'd like to point out is look at this beautiful root system. That's gonna do great. So I'm just gonna push the soil around the base and then gently push it down to compact the soil so it makes good contact with the roots. Okay, one down, 11 to go.
Now that the plants are in, I'm looking at them again to see if there are any leaves that are going to touch the ground. And again, this is for pest control. I'm going to explain everything in just a couple minutes, but I see this one is going to touch the ground, and so is this one. Now I'm going to hand water them in. No matter how careful you are with your plants as you're transplanting them, the transplant process is always a little traumatic for them. And so I don't want them to start wilting or looking stressed. We want happy plants. Let's talk about pest control now. Unfortunately, the bummer thing about cabbage family crops is that they are bug magnets. And so the types of things that you might encounter in your garden when growing any of these types of crops are aphids, which are awful, cabbage worms, and depending on where you live, it might be the imported cabbage worm, cabbage looper, or the diamondback moth caterpillar. And then the third type of creature that you might encounter is slugs. So first I'm going to show you what we do to deal with slugs. And do you like the little bird in the background there? That is a song sparrow and he is an insectivore. Well, I don't know if he's a he or a she, but he is looking for all kinds of little creatures. So we'll let him do his thing. And I'm gonna show you what we use for slugs. A few years ago, I learned an interesting thing about slugs, and that is that their skin reacts electrically with copper. And so there is a type of paper-backed copper tape that you can purchase in garden centers. It's very easy to find. The brand is Cory's, and I think it's called Cory's Copper Slug and Snail Tape. And my husband got the idea that if you take some type of a plastic pipe. This is a three inch diameter drain pipe. You can make little uh, sections of it and then tape the copper around the outside of the ring. This is actually a DIY project that's in my new book, The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. So you might be interested in trying that. So I'm going to put these at the base of the broccoli plants. I'm going to make sure that they make good contact with the soil. You don't want to leave a little gap that the slug could slither underneath of and get to the plant. And so that was why I was trimming off the lowest branches. If I have a leaf that is going down towards the soil and touching it, that is another way for a slug to get up to the plant. And so as I put these on, I might find there's a few more leaves that I need to trim off, but that's okay. So this works great. The other thing you can use for dealing with slugs is an organic slug bait. You definitely want to go the organic route. It contains iron phosphate, which is a natural ingredient, and it's safe to use. The non-organic slug baits contain metaldehyde, and that is toxic to pets and other types of animals. So do not use that in your garden. So let's put these in place. Okay, the first plant's going to be pretty easy. So all I do is just hold the leaves together and then carefully get the ring down to the bottom. This is really the only way to do this. <laughs> there. And then I'm pushing it into the soil to make good contact. So one thing I wanted to clarify is that snails and slugs will want to avoid this because the copper gives them a little bit of an electric shock and they don't like that at all. Now this one, I might have to take this leaf off. We shall see. Boy, that might be okay. I could even put a little stake in here and just kind of lean it a bit to put some distance between the soil and the lowest part of the leaf. So we'll see. You know, I always hate to cut off many leaves because obviously this is how a plant gets energy from the sun 
using photosynthesis in order to make food for the plant. Okay, all of the copper rings are in place and I propped up a couple of plants that I thought would have problems with leaves touching the ground. And by the way, boy, is it getting warm and very, very sunny. So I've got my sun hat on down to the t-shirt. <laughs> now, before I move to the next part of the pest control, I don't want to forget to plant the turnip seeds. Now, just in case you're thinking, ew, disgusting, I don't like turnips. I used to think the same thing. And then Burpee came out with a variety called Silky Sweet. And they are so tasty. We love to mash them with potatoes and it adds a really nice flavor. You can even eat them like an apple. And I know that sounds weird, but we have done that. They're not so hard as a rock like the turnips are that you buy in the grocery store. These are like eating an apple. Um, you can cut it up and put it into a vegetable dip, you know, anything like that. But they are so good and I do recommend this Silky Sweet. It is great. Now I'm going to make a little furrow along this drip tubing and have two long rows of turnips. And the seeds germinate like 100%, so I have to be really careful to space them a bit so that I don't have to waste any by thinning them later. Now let's talk about keeping things like aphids and cabbage worms away from your plants. The best way to do this is to use something called floating row cover or tool, which is bridal veil netting. And I'll explain what the differences are in a moment. But to do that, you really need to have hoops over your bed that you can lay those covers onto. Now, in my book, I have another DIY project, and that is to make row cover hoops. One of them involves using black plastic sprinkler pipe, that's the poly pipe, and they are really sturdy, which is great. And then the other is to make a bender so that you can make your own hoops made from EMT, which stands for electrical metal tubing. And I'm going to use these for the broccoli bed because they are pretty tall. And since the broccoli plants will get tall, I want to give them a little bit of headspace between the top of the plant and the cover that I put on. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, the row cover hoops are in place. I just push them down into the soil to make them nice and secure. And I usually recommend spacing them about two and a half feet apart. This is floating row cover. You can see it's a very lightweight fabric. You can see my hand through here. It will allow sunlight and moisture to go through. So if it were to rain, the plants underneath would still get watered. But this is hands down my favorite organic pest control tool. And that's because it acts as a physical barrier to keep those damaging pests away from plants. Now you can use this over plants for the whole season if they do not need to be pollinated. And that would certainly apply to cabbage family crops. Yay! So I am going to use this over the, the broccoli for the first couple of weeks. And that's because we still have some potential nighttime temperatures in the upper 30s. And so I just want to keep the plants safe. But I'm going to remove this and replace it with tulle, bridal veil netting, right after that. And so let me show you what that is. So this is bridal veil netting. I bet you've seen it a hundred times because of going to weddings. And that is what it is made for. However, you can use this as a type of floating row cover. And I like to use it over cabbage family crops for a few reasons. For one thing, they are technically a cool season crop. They prefer cooler temperatures, good air circulation. And when I put this over the cabbage bed or the broccoli bed, it really gives good airflow and the plants seem to really like it especially if you live in an area that is warmer and has higher humidity. It seems like the plants just really benefit from it. But the other reason I like it is because you can see exactly what's going on underneath, whereas you can't see through the floating row cover. So that means I don't need to lift this off the plants to check on them. I can see exactly what they're doing and if there are any problems going on. So I really like this. 
And of course, they will keep the butterflies or moths, depending upon the type of cabbage worm you get, away from the plant so they can't lay eggs on the leaves. It also keeps out aphids, provided you buy what's called premium quality tool netting or bridal veil netting. And that's because the holes in the premium quality are much smaller. And you know, aphids are just tiny. I have occasionally gotten a couple aphids underneath, but it's, it's not that common. You can buy this online by the bolt to get a really great price. That's what I did. You can buy it by the yard at fabric stores. But this is what I was talking about as a potential cover. So I'm going to start out with the floating row cover for a couple of weeks, and then I'm going to switch to this so that the plants will get good air circulation. I can watch them and keep the pests away. Okay, the floating row cover is in place. And one of the things you really need to be good about doing is to weigh it down around the edges so it won't blow off in the wind or even in a breeze like this. And so I use bricks, boards, rocks, you know, any old thing that will keep it in place because if this blows off of those broccoli plants, they are not being protected. The other thing is that both floating row cover and the tool netting will last quite a while if you take good care of them. This definitely lasts longer than the tool, I will say. And I think that's because after two or three seasons, because of the sun hitting the tool netting all the time, I think it sort of deteriorates a bit. But with the floating row cover, if I ever get a hole in it, and even with the tool netting, I just take a clothespin and close it together and the bugs can't get in. So that works really well. So now you know what I do to keep bugs away from cabbage family crops. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I'll see you next week.